I went to like a performing arts school and I sat, they let me sit with a bunch of girls and I went through the whole script and I said, would you say that? They were like, no, how would you say it? Okay, good. And so I just did that in Project Power. And so when I see people being like, oh, I thought she was from New Orleans. I'm like, thank you. Brooklyn born actress, poet and playwright. She has earned universal praise. Please welcome Dominique Fishback. When I first met Dominique Fishback, it was for the incredible feature, Judas and the Black Messiah. And right away, I could sense she was something special. At that level, so many artists have to be guarded or jaded to get where they are, but there is a pureness around her craft. I got to see this process up close again during Swarm. What Dom touches turns to gold. I cannot wait to share our conversation with you. Hey, hold on. Before we get to the good stuff, would you just take a moment, like this video and subscribe to the channel? It really helps us out. And then also you won't miss any of the exciting weekly conversations I'll be posting. Thank you. Welcome to Unmuted, where we explore how our voice and accents are so much more than just words. I'm dialect coach Audrey Lacrone. Dom, thank you for being here. And of cheers. Course. Cheers. cheers. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Okay. And I don't mess with my lipstick, you know. Mm-hmm. Listen. <laughs> So because I'm a dialect coach and this is a podcast where we're speaking, we're just going to start with like a little vocal warm up because oh, uh, that's fun. Okay. I haven't warmed up my voice today. Me so Yikes. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite warm up? One that we did on Swarm was uh, Betty bought some butter or something. Oh, something. yeah. Okay. So you're from New York <laughs> and a lot of York. times you have to neutralize your New York. Yes. And this particular one, I have it right here on my computer. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> so, I'm nervous. Oh wait, wait. Can you do it? Wait, wait. Can you do it twice? Once in your regular accent, and then once oh, sure. in something else. So uh, this is New York or Dom York? <laughs> no. Dom York. Um, yes. Betty. Betty Botter bought some butter. I'm doing it over. I'm gonna do it. I'm over yeah, doing it. Yeah. I love it. But said this butter is better. If I bake this better butter, it will make my batter better. But a bit of better butter that would make my batter better. So she bought a bit of butter better than her bitter butter. And she baked it in her batter. And the batter was not bitter. So twas better Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter. Yeah. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. <laughs> um, so now how would you say this if your character was from somewhere else? Oh my god. Like uh, LA. We're in Los Angeles right now. How would your character from LA say I don't this? How these people talk? <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, I have to okay. I have to study it to do it. Oh, well, that you would have what? you. No, and you then know we what? I'm that. the same way. Everyone's always like, "Oh, Audrey, do this accent or this accent." And yeah. I'm like, "Listen, that's not really what I do. Yeah. I'm not a parrot. There are parrot people who can just do pick accents, it pick me. it up. I have to study it, and I have to be like, I have to study particular people." Because, like, Dom York, everyone has a different <laughs> New York accent. Everyone Absolutely. has a different neighborhood accent, yeah. whatever. So I wouldn't be like, oh, this is a New York accent because yeah. there's people from the Bronx, people from mm -hmm. Staten Island. So I don't like when people are like, oh, that's a Brooklyn accent. When they, when they talk a certain way, I'm like, that's not my Brooklyn. I so uh, I, won't, I wouldn't generalize, generalize L.A. I don't know the sounds. But when you and I work together, we talk about the sounds, yeah. the way the A's sound, the way mm -hmm. the U's sound. And then I'm able to apply that to the sounds. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that about you. And like what I noticed right now with with Betty Botter, you say Botter and then bought. Bought, bought. yeah. Bought some butter. Yeah, where I'm from Kansas and I say bot. Bot. <laughs> bot. <laughs> yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, so if, if you were teaching me a Kansas accent, then mm -hmm. I would copy what you're doing yeah. and know that the sound is mm -hmm. different. You but, tighten your throat and be like, yeah, 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 but when I'm like, I'm not really like a... I could, when I'm doing like a, let's say, New Orleans or something like that, I mm -hmm. will listen to everybody around me and I'll just start copying them. Yeah. Like, so if I'm hearing makeup, I'm like, oh, sorry, that don't want you to take offense. I'm just trying to get the accent. So Do they I'll like that, that or are they ever weird about it? Uh, No, most of the time they like it because they understand that you're doing it for the yeah. for the role. Yeah. But um, I just remember sometimes random people would come in and talk and then I'll go, dang it, and i do exactly what they did. And then my hair person's like, don't do that because they're not a part of... You know, the, mm. the the trailer, they don't know what I'm doing. Some people are very sensitive well, honestly, like, about the accent. Do they know the difference? Like, do they... they it, but no, because I will copy exactly what they said. I know, but they pro that's probably like a familiar feeling to them. Like, oh. You think so? I don't know. I don't know. If I, if I, was, if I was talking, and every time I talked, somebody was saying... If I was talking, I, was I would talking. be like, what are you doing that for? 
What are you doing that for? Yeah, like, why, <laughs> you are fucking done. Okay. <laughs> why the fuck? But, but, I, but if I go, I'm just trying to um, get the accent, yeah. you know, so I'm just trying to copy everybody that I hear. I hope you don't find offense or I won't do it if you don't want me to. And they usually are like, no, do it, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. What accent, this is our icebreaker, what accent okay. do you find <clears throat> sexiest? <laughs> oh my God, British accent, of course. What kind of British? Uh, It doesn't even matter to me. Really? Yep. Well, except like, oh, well, not Cockney and things like that, but like London is cool. Uh, when I watch like romances with the royal family type stuff, I like that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, like the posh British. Yeah, like when I say I fancy you. <laughs> oh yeah. It's so okay, cute. why do you think that is? Because I've been asking people like what accents they find sexiest, but the real interesting part is why. Ah, uh, that's a uh. I don't know. I think since I was a kid, I was a romantic. And so mm. when you, I don't know, when they say like, I fancy you, it's, it's like better than I like you. Yeah. Fancy. It's like nice. It, it's like a, you know, there's a softness to mm. it. The words are softer. But even, even sometimes like now I'm learning a little bit more about London accents, mm. you know, just knowing uh, Dan Kalua and like, or Damson and how, and, or Gary Carr, who I did the deuce with, they are different parts of London. Mm-hmm. So his sounds a little bit more proper. And the, dang, sometimes you talk, I'm like, I don't even know what you said. You have know. to slow it down for me. Actually, I do that sometimes with him too. Yeah. <laughs> with Daniel Kaluuya. And, and he'll be like, yeah, all right, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, bro, what'd you just say? I don't say? know what you said. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely different. But I think it's maybe it's even the, the choice of words that mm-hmm. they use. Right. The, yeah, the word, the vocabulary is totally mm-hmm, different. Mm-hmm. It is nice. I fancy you. Yeah. Dumb. Oh, thank you. So what's your relationship like with your own voice? I always mm. find that to be curious because since you're doing other accents, other characters, like what's the source like? Yeah. I think I always wanted to do music when I was a kid. And so yeah. when I would hear myself on uh, back, like if I recorded something, I was like, that doesn't sound like me. I don't yeah. like my voice. So I, when I was younger, I had a... Uh, repelled my own voice when I heard mm, it back. Yeah. But I think because I started acting when I was 15 and doing more of that stuff, I started to get used to hearing the sound of my own voice back to me. Mm-hmm. So that makes it easier to um, to watch or listen to certain mm-hmm. things. Um, sometimes I, you know, sometimes I get a little, not self-conscious, but I can hear it more. Like if I'm really excited and I'm on a carpet and I say, oh my God. Like it, I don't, I don't finish the. Oh my god! Like I don't finish the the sounds. Yeah. Like God, so that I can hear it and it sounds a little like it rings in my ear. You don't like it? No. Why? No. Um, I don't know. It just makes me. Sometimes it makes me like this. Huh? Yeah. But that's the sounds you kind of grew up with, right? Uh, like uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, when I think of New York, I think of more like forward pushing mm-hmm. the words mm-hmm. store door mm-hmm. dog mm-hmm. like those type of things god is uh i think that's a personal thing mm, you know oh my god oh my god like i, I just want to finish the word like i'm like don you could just finish finish mm. the word but that's also what i'm learning in my voice class when my when my teacher is like oh finish the phrase through right sometimes i'll stop a phrase sure but right. i'm also a spoken word poet and everything is real staccato you know mm-hmm. but when you <laughs> were in acting school you were told you were taught like the voice techniques of speaking properly, yeah, right? Speak and like this is the only way to speak. It, it wasn't that it was the only way in in speech class. It was just more like this was standard American. Yeah. Um, and I resist that that terminology because mm-hmm. I don't know what standard American is. And yeah. um, but I but I was in school when I I used to feel self conscious when I was in school because okay. like kids used to uh, when I was in college used to make fun of me or or something like enunciate. You know, they hmm. told me in theater school to enunciate. And how'd that make you feel? It was an, it was really annoying because then I got to the point where they would say when I was in Brooklyn, oh, you sound like a, you sound like a white girl. Yeah. And then when I was in school, they'd be like, oh, I don't know what you're saying. You sound so Brooklyn. So that wow. used to bother me. But then when I realized, like, if I don't if I don't internalize the idea that something is standard American or standard or proper, mm-hmm. then it doesn't bother me. Because if, again, if I need to do... A project and I'm supposed to be from Brooklyn, then they're gonna be like, Don, can can you do this for me? Can you talk like this? Oh now, oh now it's right. right. So I, t- I I tend to understand that wherever the character is from is proper, is standard. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna clap to that. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's 
I am so for that. Yeah. And that's why we do the specific voice models mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. why we don't generalize. Yep. And why I loved your answer of, no, I don't know an L.A. accent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Give me something really specific. Yes. Specific neighborhood, a specific family or whatever. I yeah, love that. Absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like you switch your voice or your accent in different circumstances? I feel like I do... Um, I, I don't know that I do it on purpose, but if it's a carpet, I know that I'm enunciating more. Hmm. It's just, a, it's not even like, damn, you have to enunciate. It just goes, I want to be clearer. And I, I talk yeah. like this and I'm more up on my voice when I'm speaking. And then when I'm chilling, I'm, it's more like back in my throat. It's more New York. It's more like, yeah, I'm good. How you doing? I'm feeling good. Like, you know, hmm. it's not a lot of effort. Yeah. It's yeah. like a formal environment mm -hmm. versus intimate. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know which one I'm doing right now. I don't know. Ooh. Maybe a mix? Probably. I don't I don't know what you're doing. Probably a mix. Um I do the same thing. And I'll find I have my teacher voice and I'm like, Hello, how are you? And then I'm like <laughs> I'm very much room. speaking from my belly and I'm like, <laughs> Hi, it's so nice to meet you all. Yes, hello. <laughs> like, exactly, exactly. Um and then Apparently, when I'm with my family, my my country accent kicks in, mm. and I trained it out of myself in school. So, like, I don't know how to do it unless I'm yeah. with my family or mm. doing hard labor or yeah. drinking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I really comes out. I really like uh, respect dialect and stuff. When I when I had to do Project Power, um, and it was in New Orleans, they tried to tell me that I didn't need to get a dialect coach. Um, mm -hmm. And HSL said, oh, it's like closer to New York. And I was like, no, there's certain words that they say that we don't say. Yeah. And I have to know. So mm -hmm. I actually went to the school. I went to like a performing arts school and I sat. They let me sit with a bunch of girls. And I went through the whole script and I said, would you say that? They were like, no, how would you say it? Okay, good. Wow. And I and I recorded. And so I just did that in in uh, Project Power. And so when I see people being like, oh, I thought you was from New Orleans. I'm like, thank you. Because they try to tell me I didn't need one. Because a lot of times they don't want to pay for dialect coaching and I think that's a disservice to the whole entire project they don't normally like to let you guys on set so mm -hmm. you want the actor to focus on the character all those things is going around and also a dialect that yeah. they're not used to doing right. I just think that it's not really it's helpful crazy. to the project and then the audience is watching like oh that accent is terrible they're going in and out mm -hmm. but one thing that you say that I really appreciate is that nobody's accent is 100% a thing even mm -hmm. mine, like nobody can say I'm not from New York because it goes in and out. It's natural. Well, it's different circumstances. Different like circumstances. you have your formal New York, but even informal. but even when I'm whether I'm formal or not, like when I'm in my hood, I still will talk more like where I'm from, and then there'll be words that comes out that mm -hmm. comes out that's different, and it goes mm -hmm. in and out. So when you said that to me, every time we approach a, a project, it gives me a little bit more freedom. So Dre doesn't have to always sound the same because we mm -hmm. don't always sound the same. Exactly. Whether or not you're studying dialect or you're just a regular person and you're just talking about something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On that note, one thing that I love about dialects or what they say about your accent is that your sound, your accent is who loved you when you were growing up oh. or who you were around. But I like to say who loved you when you were growing up and what you were exposed to or what you loved. Interesting. So the who loved you and what you loved. Yeah. People will say like, you know, uh, I just did a video with my mom uh, talking about the Emmy stuff and mm. really in the interview, she's talking a lot. Mm -hmm. And so people are like, oh, you sound just like your mom. I don't think I sound like my mom. I could definitely hear the New York from my mom like all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? But uh, yeah. Do you feel like accents are getting more neutralized as we become more globalized? Um, I don't think so. I think I still think it's a conscious effort mm. on a person's part, you know, or how long you stayed in, in a certain area. If I would have stayed only in Brooklyn until I was 30, mm -hmm. I don't care how much people I come across and meet. I don't know how different my accent would be or how neutralized it would be mm. unless I made a conscious effort. Mm -hmm. So when I was in school and people would talk about my accent, I was like, well, uh, it's not so much that I'm offended by what they say is more so what kind of actor do I want to be? You know, I want to mm. be the actor that really, truly embodies a character and that people don't have to see me when they see a character. And if that requires me to be able to neutralize my accent, then that's just going to happen. You know? Yeah. And then when I do interviews or I talk like and that's why I'm very um, conscious, even 
you know, meeting with uh, producers on certain mm-hmm. things. I'm very much, I very much talk like this, like mm-hmm. New York, like I, mm-hmm. and especially when I'm passionate about something, I think they think New Yorkers are aggressive, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I, I would, in the past, I would be like, okay, when I'm talking to a producer, make sure that they don't think that I'm being aggressive if I'm passionate about my character. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh yeah, I just don't think that she would do that, da da da. And now I could be like, I don't think she's going to do that. And here's why I think she's not going to do that. And whether or not they perceive it a certain way is not my concern. You know? Good. Because Good. I, I also know that I'm doing it because I care. If they listen to what I'm saying, they know I care about the entirety mm-hmm. of the show and the character. So I don't have to present. And, like, you know, we're acting all the time. You act when they say action. You even act when it's cut. Because you because there's so many people around, right? And you want to give everybody a good experience with you. So if you're having a, a bad day and you, and you could do 30, you could do 90 days on set talking to everybody like this. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as there's one day where you're like, oh, hey, what's up? Now I'm like, oh, what's wrong? With that? It's like, you know, so yeah. I can't be concerned about that stuff. You just mm-hmm. have to be who I am. Approach mm-hmm. it like that. Be yourself, love. Mm. You know, that's my little thing. Yes, be yourself, love. Go get all of her merchandise. I was gonna wear her little hat today, and I forgot. It's okay. You can get the cute hat. That says be yourself, love. Yes. <laughs> um, so, do you ever experience that discrimination against any sort of New York accents, or discrimination against your voice or accent at all? Have you experienced that? Uh, I know I experienced it when I was younger mm-hmm. in school and stuff also. like that. Uh, well, just it being point, pointed out or when I was 15, like a theater, a theater director called me Mushmouth. Yeah. Mushmouth? hmm He didn't call me it all the time, but he did call me it before, which is sometimes it's very uh, confusing because he's also extremely supportive and believed that mm. I could do anything. You know, we mm. I saw my first one woman show at that company and I was like, wow, she did. He was like, you could do that. Like, you think so? Like, yeah, you could do that. And, that- I, and I have a one woman show. Was that Subvert? Subvert is my one on the show. Subverted. Yeah, but I saw uh, Nalijah's son's No Child, and she mm-hmm. was all different characters right before our eyes. Wow. In a way I'd never seen before. And I was like, wow. And then he was, but he saw my excitement and was like, you could do that. Like it was like nothing, you know? It was and like, he was right. He was absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. He was right. But, but he wasn't right about the mush mouth. I mean, whether he was right or not, I mean, I definitely talk more like this, you know, like it was That's close. That's so sexy to me. <laughs> Thank oh <my> you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it was more, it was definitely more like that. So whether or not it was mush is not the point. Like he was mm. acknowledging that, you know, you have to enunciate and do that. It was a nicer way he could have did it, but you know. Hey. Yeah. But I'm also from Brooklyn. I was going to, I'm from East New York. I was going to high school in Brownsville. You get tough skin, so... Um, you know, I mean, and then you, ha- in order to be in this industry, you have to have tough skin. Yeah. Especially now with social media and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So the fact that he's, my, he said that to me when I was a kid, it was like, yeah, not nice. But now when people say stuff on the internet, it's like, not nice, but what are you going to do? Wow. Yeah. I want to know more about your process for, for becoming these embodied roles mm-hmm. that, I mean, you do such a good job. Thank you so it's, much. It's captivating to watch you. I appreciate it. It really it. truly is. I and that. I get I have the honor of watching so many incredible actors just transform and you're absolutely way, way, way high up there on oh, that I list. Appreciate because it's you. for me it's such a gift to be able to watch you. I appreciate um, that. It means a lot. And what's most fun for me at least is to see the beginning of the process and mm-hmm. then see how it transforms mm-hmm. into the performance. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the the process of becoming a character, especially one with a different way of speaking than you. Yeah, so I the first time I really, really had to do it was Project Power, and mm-hmm. I was kind of on my own, basically. But I do have a, my dialect coach from school, uh, Lester Shane, who I would be like, yo, if a production is not going to pay for it, I'm going to call him, pay out of pocket to just see him mm-hmm. and tell me, like, you know, what the sound is, at least if the production's not going to be responsible for it, I'm going to be responsible for it. So then it would be after that, I would tell my team, hey, listen, when we're doing, I have to see the movie before I do ADR, Mm -hmm. please. That's very important to me so that if I hear a sound that is too New York, I have to be able to add that to the dialect list of of what we have to do for ADR. Mm -hmm. Um, So that would be my first purchase. And then it was Project Power. And then, uh, and then it was Judas. Mm-hmm. After that, really, 
And uh, and then I met you, and I felt like I was a little behind. They had started shooting already, and I was coming yeah. off of reshoots for Project Power. So I was a little bit, but your, I guess, calming nature, and then just being like, what we're just going to do is focus on neutralizing the New York sounds. Yeah. So that's how I approach everything now. Luckily, you know, with Swarm Hedge as well, but that's how I would go up towards any project that mm. I do with a dialect. So you neutralize first and then build on top of that. Yes. Which I think is a really good yeah. method. And then I think there's certain words that I will focus on. Like, for example, talk, walk, those type of words. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm going to think about it. So mm-hmm. uh, you might even see me slow down if I have to say it. Oh, slowing down is the best. I'll be like, oh, uh, the yeah. character's talking. And I'll be like, and then talk. And then like mm-hmm. it's like I have to, the placement of the tongue. Yeah. Because in New York, we go talk. And then, but standard might be like talk. Like yeah. the tongue, the tip of the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So. so that I think we even did that for Deborah Johnson in Judas mm-hmm. and the Black Messiah, mm-hmm. didn't we th- uh, slow her down? Absolutely. Because there was only that one, one clip that we had. Yeah, we had one clip to go off of. And then what? What you also did to build off of that because we only had that one clip. You also took uh, some things that you gave to Daniel mm-hmm. for Chairman Fred mm-hmm. and said, you know, because you are but the people you love, right? The people you're, you you're love, like this, mm-hmm. is uh, affected by the people who love you, mm-hmm. and um, if she's been listening to him and she reveres him and she thinks so highly of him, then maybe she would start picking up yeah. certain sounds. So I thought, and and I think I like your approach because it's, uh, is because maybe because you're a, we're an actor, mm-hmm. it's rooted in like truth of the character. Yeah. And that's important to me. I don't do things just because somebody said to do it. If right. you could say, oh, you know, you'll do this sound because like that's how they spoke in that time. I'm like, oh, okay. But you being like, you know, I get, we actually gave this sound to Daniel for chairman. So I'm like, 100%. Yeah. Give it to me because I understand that influence. Right. You know? I think that's so important. Just like thinking about the whole story and thinking about your character in the world of the mm-hmm. story. Like what serves the story? Yeah. I don't give a shit what the the little breakdown of the accent says. Exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> what serves the story and yeah. how can we make this character come to life? I think you just said, um, I, I want to respect the character. Or no, the character is my... Responsibility. responsibility absolutely i was like oh that's the holiness yeah. that i'm talking oh, about of like you. you you really take a character and you do feel the weight of that responsibility mm-hmm. and then you yeah. feel it and I, and I do that just for outside of dialect just for every aspect yeah. and if i'm responsible for the character then i'm responsible for the show as in, in as an entirety mm-hmm. and then i'll also be responsible for my the other characters yeah. especially if i'm in a position of like whether i'm a producer mm-hmm. or number one in a call sheet or number two mm-hmm. like uh even with even with uh transformers when i had ideas if i thought something was gonna make or help anthony's character mm-hmm. then i would just suggest it anyway because mm-hmm. i'm not leaving anybody behind yeah. If I'm going to go like this every day and like study and then be like, oh, this might be good, da, 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 then I'll do it for the other person as well. Wow. You know? God, you're so giving. <laughs> Thanks. Honestly. I don't honestly, know you're such like, a, like a beautiful giving spirit. Thank oh, you. I love being around you. Oh, thank you. I feel the same. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> I miss you. Too. Uh, <laughs> bring it in. I know, next project, we'll get to do something. Yeah. I want to sure. do, I do want to do a London accent. You've been wanting to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Breaking down any accent mm-hmm. specifically is a love letter to the mm-hmm. culture and the neighborhood. Oh, and even the when Dre was sworn, like, she's so interesting. Like, oh, I, I don't even, I don't okay, even know you, what to call her accent, to be honest. Can you like, talk about our process for that? Because <laughs> that was so fun. I think most important for me is never to, uh, overload a dialect you know mm-hmm. like I like even if I know that this is the sound if you do every sound it's gonna sound forced and I right. much rather people not hear an accent at mm-hmm. all than to be like oh that they trying to do an accent it's not good it's taking you out of the story yeah again it's yeah, not exactly. serving the story yeah it has to serve the story yeah so that was the the thing with the whole uh Dre thing and you know figuring out mixing Houston like using some Beyonce sounds and using, uh, what was the girl's Blood name? Bloodbath. Bloodbath. <laughs> Bloodbath. Okay, so what I call this now is a dialect spectrum. Yeah. So in order to create your character, we chose two people on opposite sides of the spectrum. We had young Beyonce. Mm-hmm. And she said, whale. Yeah, whale. Oh, whale, oh, whale. A I whale. can't even do it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's another thing. Like, you got to do it every day. So we found her. We found all those different Beyonce clips. And then on the other side of the spectrum, we had this... Young rapper named Bloodbath. Bloodbath. And M- Bloodbath M- is so A. Houston, so uh-huh. third ward. Uh-huh. It's this incredible accent. Yeah. Oh my I even God. Do it now oh, I tried. <laughs> it was amazing. So um, we had Bloodbath's accent and Beyonce's, and I made you do them both 
from the clips imitation every single day. Yes. Because if you don't do it every day, you start assuming things yep. and you can't trust your ears because mm -hmm. they'll go back to your natural sound. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that was fun. It was fun. And I think even with like Dre's monologue in the mall, like mm -hmm. that one had more of the, uh, I think, Beyonce sounds that we found. Mm -hmm more than Dre normally would. But mm -hmm. I think it worked out because she was in a fantasy. Yeah. You know, and so everything was going to be a little bit more, like, slow. Yeah, and on that side of the loved, spectrum. Whereas right. bloodbath and, like, um, 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 mm -hmm. you know? Do you have any advice for aspiring actors who are wanting to do different accents or to be an actor or to, to win all these awards and have people... <laughs> um, drool over your talent what Devin, would be your advice like as cliche as it sounds to remember why you do it mm. because uh if you get you can get wrapped up in the awards and all that kind of stuff and it's really not uh uh it's not a necessarily awards based off of the performance at the right. time it's popularity is all these other things that you have no control over. Mm, definitely. I really want to spend this year getting back to my roots, which is writing, because when I was grinding and didn't have money and didn't have these opportunities, I was still excited to do it, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I had some kind of ownership, because I cared about what I was saying. And not that I don't care about what I was saying, what I'm saying now, but on a days when it may be really hard to be on a set or something like that, when it's something that you wrote, that you took the time to nurture and care for, there's a different type of uh, will that you mm. might have. And I just want to get that. I just want to get that back. Yeah. You feel like you lost that a little? Uh, Definitely. I took a break after Swarm. It took like six mm. months off, you know, yeah. and then came back and did press for Swarm and and uh, Transformers. And then it was a strike. Yeah. You know, and then I worked on music. Yeah. Um, but really lately... Even with all the awards things, the best thing, best feeling that I had was writing a song and seeing it through. Mm, amazing. That's the truth, yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, you have so much to say. Thanks. And mm. the way you say anything is so beautiful. Thank you. That we want to hear more of your voice. <laughs> Thank you. I we appreciate wanna, that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You're so brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. You're so fucking brilliant. Thank for you real. So much. Yeah. One of the best moments that I think I had was... Uh, when, when I was doing ADR and you were on the computer and I had to do all these different things and you were like, after you were like, Dom, that was a master class in like eight, just in ADR. And I, you know, I, you know, I don't necessarily think of ADR as a, um, as a skill per se, you know, but ADR for people, you don't explain ADR. For it's just voiceover stuff for, um, for screen. So when you have, for instance, an outside scene and there's a bunch of traffic going by or something, then you're going to loop over the dialogue. Yeah. So most of the time in the same tone and the same, uh, free, like frequency or yeah. melody that you said it. Um, and that it's can like be lip syncing really for, for talking, for talking, for, for <laughs> show. Um, yeah. and yeah. And so you saying that really did mean a lot to me because I, I put a hundred percent effort in every single thing that I do yeah, as it do. pertains to a character. And so um, to hear about ADR was really nice as well. Oh my God, I remember that. It was incredible. <laughs> I was like, I, I was speechless afterwards. It was really- Cause I had to like cry and yeah. into the mic. And like, it was when I was running from the father who was shooting mm -hmm. the gun in the episode You had to like kind of go crazy five, at one like, point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was- And like, yeah, and breathe, and like do all of this stuff, but the camera's not on you. It's literally just picking up the sound. Yeah. I think I smiled that whole day afterwards. <laughs> I was like, what? what did I just witness? Uh, like, what? This is that. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Dominique Fishback. Yes. I just love saying your name. Oh, thank you. Dominique Fishback. <laughs> what else do you have coming up that we need to look for? I mean, obviously, I have Subverted, which Jamie Foxx is going to executive produce. So we're going to be pitching it so that cool. we can film it as a special. That would be really dope to do. It's going to be amazing. Um, working, thank you. Working on uh, music, like I said. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm writing. I'm writing a rom-com. So. Oh, that'll be so good. Yeah, thanks. Mm, that'll excited. be so good. Yeah. Good. I cannot wait to see all of the things that you thank have you. in store for you in the future. Because it's going to be incredible. You're such a good storyteller. And thanks. the world is better for you sharing your gifts. I oh, appreciate so, that a lot. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you for all having right. me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Unmuted. If you haven't already, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. See you next time.